The Revamped Podcast, hosted by Lindsay Hepner. Rebuilding the digital entrepreneur. So guys, I'm so excited. We have Eric Way on the studio, in the studio today, and we are going to be talking about Carrot. But first of all, we have this new question that we're asking all of our... Okay. (laughs) All of our entrepreneurs, and what does digital entrepreneurship mean to you? Yeah. So first of all, Lindsay, thank you so much for having me here. Of course. Very excited. Second, what does digital entrepreneurship mean? So I think two points, right? I think the first is entrepreneurship at the end of the day is trying something that hasn't been done before. Mm -hmm. And if it hasn't been done before and you want to try doing it, that usually means it's the combination of a couple different concepts. The first that it is clearly a brilliant idea, which is why you want to do it. But also it might seem like a really stupid idea, which is probably why it hasn't been done before. And so as an entrepreneur, you're always thinking through, oh, okay, why do I want to do this? And the fact that there is an opportunity for me to do this implies there are reasons why other people think this is stupid and it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of the ways you think through that second piece is, well, People used to think those are stupid, but something's changed either in what technology has now made possible or in how technology has changed how people think and believe in their behaviors. And for us, that's where the digital piece comes in. You're an entrepreneur. You want to do something different. People may have traditionally thought it was not something you should do, but it's now altered because technology trends have evolved and moved on. Yeah. Digital has now taken place. And so when you think about what we do, right? We build better financial products for digital creators and influencers. This is literally now possible as a thing because digital platforms have really brought on this entire new rise of a new class of businesses and creators and influencers Mm -hmm. that wasn't there before. Yeah. So once upon a time, you might have looked at what we're doing and saying, hey, this doesn't make sense. And now it's like, well, digital is really making it real and making it happen. Oh, that's that's. Uh, oh my gosh, I couldn't have said it better. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Great job yeah. at, at really breaking that down. I agree. There is more of a area to play in, yes. right? That maybe your idea or concept before didn't seem tangible or doable, but now there is. Oh my gosh, my dog is crying. Chris, can you come grab Zoe? She really yeah, likes me. she she really likes Eric, uh, but I think she will. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of crying. Hello. Can you grab her, yeah. please? She's adorable. No, she's you're at, she really gravitates towards you. I mean, I love her so because I'm glad she reciprocates. Yeah, because yeah. you're the first guest. She's like. Please, <laughs> like, <laughs> please. Probably every time I see her, I just can't help but like <laughs> yeah. cuddle her all over. So. Um, also, Eric, I'm really into zodiac signs. We talked about yes. your zodiac sign before, but do you want to tell the audience yeah. what your zodiac so sign is? I was is? born on July 22nd. That's literally the precipice is the edge between Leo and Cancer. Yes. And you are, I can see both, which yeah, is thank you. really kind of a cool edge to be on because yeah. leos are very they're able and capable of doing a lot of things which is great for an entrepreneur like you to like tackle a lot of things but they're also very empathetic and mm. they're they have a lot of heart as well as cancers do cancers love and are very compassionate and understanding yeah. great listeners and i've had obviously over like a two and a half hour conversation with you the other day and you were so understanding you asked great questions you really were like there you know I feel like in our society and digital world a lot of people have a very short attention span and you like you know broke bread with me and Uh really like got to know me and I really appreciate that because I feel like that's a really good quality to quality to have especially when you're entering this kind of type of digital space you need to still have that you need to still have your networking capabilities of talking to people and getting to know them at a level especially when you're talking about finances oh yes right like you're diving deep 
into people's lifestyles yes. and what they really gravitate towards and what they care about. And, you know, financial burden is yeah. a huge thing for people in this space. So I want to kind of talk about how you got started. I know you've been yeah. in like Silicon Valley world for a long right. time, big tech. And that is kind of the big thing right now, big tech, like even on on social media, obviously is big tech, but like just in the media. So can you kind of tell us your background and how you got started? And it's so interesting. So yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. So I've done a few different things. So most recently, before starting this company, Startup Carrot, I was at Facebook, Instagram for three, four years where I worked there as a product manager. And a product manager is a really interesting position or role where your job is to help think through, number one, what should we do? What should we build? Number two, how do we go and build it? And number three, let's actually go and build it and get it done. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you're just set up to be an entrepreneur. You <laughs> were asking the three questions. There's a lot all of day. corollaries, yeah. right? Between yeah. the two, of course, the trade off is as an entrepreneur, right? You get to do what you want to a much higher degree, but you also have much less support. And of course, the magical thing about being in a place like Facebook and Instagram is your impact can be tremendous because you're building products that literally millions of people will actually end up using. Mm -hmm. And so when I was there, I worked on a number of different things, but a lot of my time I was at Instagram where I helped build Instagram Live as well as other features on the platform for creators and influencers. And, and I think the biggest realization I had there, as I mentioned to you before, right? I mean, you've been doing this for before influencers and creators was like a hot thing, right? You saw the opportunity very early on. Mm -hmm. For myself, I had always been following on a personal level, but when you're on Instagram, you see like, wow, these are businesses. Yeah, It's the emergence, kind of to a very earlier point, digital has now enabled a whole new class of business mm -hmm. with a whole new set of problems. And there's opportunities in helping solve their problems and build tools for creators and influencers as businesses, mm -hmm. right? And to go a little bit more into my background, before joining Facebook, Instagram, I actually worked in fintech consulting at McKinsey and investment banking at Blackstone. Oh, wow. And so to your earlier point, I was already thinking through the finance piece and yeah. then I met all these creators where I was like, there's something here we can help yeah. them with. So what, what at fintech, what was your main role to? Yeah. So when I, before I joined Facebook, I actually was working on what's called real time payments, mm -hmm. right? So it's so interesting. You talked before about empathy and being there. And I felt so much of that in our previous discussion as well. And I talk about it because it doesn't matter how technology changes. At the end of the day, it's all about trust. Yep. And that's the same mm -hmm. when you scale it up. When you look at our financial system today, it's just people who've built systems to evaluate other people, mm -hmm. trying to decide, can I trust you? Mm -hmm. And so when I go and Venmo you $10, that money doesn't actually move over instantly. What's really happening is Venmo is, okay, saying, Eric, it, I'm pretty sure that you have $10 in your account and I'm pretty sure you're not a money launderer. So I'll essentially extend you credit of $10 and let the transaction go through and then circle back a few days later to trust and verify and make sure that it actually happened. And so what we were trying to do, real-time payments was, is there a way to make this happen faster? When I send money over to you, can it be something where I'm not extending you trust, but I'm actually able to quickly verify you have the money and transfer it over to you? And the answer is, without blockchain, you can't really do that. Yeah. You still need to have a way of evaluating trust. Yeah. And that's why so many new types of businesses and individuals mm -hmm. struggle in the financial system. Because as it's set up today, the models trust the same examples of people that they're used to seeing over and over again. Yeah. And so when somebody new comes along, like say, I'm a YouTuber with millions of subscribers. I go to a bank, I explain what they do. They'll literally ask you, are you a money launderer? Yeah. Because you don't fit into their models. They don't yeah. know how to trust you. Oh, we had actually that situation happen recently. More, um, yeah. I, I, just based on the trusting, that's so interesting yeah. because it is right now in this day and age, people want to trust others. And we recently went to the bank, you know, we're just opening up more bank accounts. But just based on what you wear is showing if they trust you or not as a customer, right? Like we went into one bank where we were barely wearing like anything suited, nice, right. or just like sandals or whatever. They treated us differently than when we came Absolutely. in 
like fully professionalized. Yeah. Like it was like night and day. And so I agree with you. This industry is very much based on like, do you look the part? Yes. Do we trust you? And have you had this longevity of financial trust, right? Yes. That's exactly right. Very <laughs> interesting. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So you've had a pretty crazy background. So you're, you're in financials. You've, you've helped grow Instagram and Facebook. And now I honestly feel like it's just the gateway to <laughs> building your own thing. I mean, you're being the three questions that you asked initially yeah. when you were at Facebook and Instagram is grained into your brain that's like you are going to be an entrepreneur for sure if you're being asked over and over those kind of questions you start to see the yeah. pattern of what's missing in the industry right yeah i appreciate that phrasing because i've always wanted to do this but for me frankly i had a lot of fear and uncertainty mm -hmm. because and we've mentioned this before, doing your own thing just requires another order of magnitude and that uncertainty of what's going to happen, Yeah, which is a very new experience. And for myself, right, I spent years really always seeing opportunities and things I wanted to work on and people I wanted to work with. But a lot of the time I was just afraid, right? I didn't think that I could do it for a variety of reasons, either from other people or from society. Yeah, And that's actually one thing I've realized is many ways you're affected by the people you spend your time around. Mm -hmm. And I was very fortunate over the past few years to find a group of people who felt similarly as myself, right? Who were going through that journey, realizing they wanted to do their own thing. And we all supported each other. And very like the conversations we had, when you just open up and you hear people, what they want to do, what's stopping you, and you realize you want to do the same things. One day I sort of just woke up, mm -hmm. right? And and my conscious mind, it felt like a switch had just flipped. But really, unconsciously, I've been thinking about this for a while. And it's just like, what's to stop me? Why don't I want to try something new? Yeah. And the whole fact that it might not work is, in a way, what makes it interesting to try and build something to help people before other people realize, like, this is a problem and this is an opportunity. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I agree with you. I feel like most people don't go after what they want because of the network that they have around them. Their close circle yeah. doesn't support them enough to make them feel like their dreams are tangible, right? And that's really important too with your family members who to support you. Like no matter what idea that you're pitching them, right. they're like, <laughs> oh my gosh, that sounds amazing, you know? Because that gives you the confidence at the end of the day to be like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I can you try know? This. Uh, yeah, I don't think, I don't think fear is based on, you know, the outside people. I think it's mostly based on your close friends that think you're an idiot for trying to do oh, that. 100%. Like you want to impress them because you want to feel supported at the end of the day that they really care about what you're doing. Yeah. You like know? we're human, right? I yeah. think so much of life is figuring out what you care about independent of what other people think mm -hmm. because the natural default tendency is to absolutely care. Yeah. And so for myself, that's a huge reason why I moved to San Francisco to find people who felt the same that I did, who would, mm -hmm. when I work on crazy ideas, one of the reasons They're not that crazy. Thank yeah. you. One yeah. of the reasons I work with well, my co-founder, he said the same thing. He's one of the first people where I just toss out random ideas and he'd be willing to entertain them and think through yeah. more. And it's actually on that same note, that's why I moved over to San Francisco. It's why we're going to move to LA. Mm -hmm. Frankly, it was actually you'll remember in our previous conversation, I was still thinking through and reflecting about was this the right move? Yeah. Because the people you surround you with are gonna be the ones who influence you going forward. For sure. And mm -hmm. it's actually after a conversation, I was like, well, if I get to meet more people like you out here, uh, that to me seems yeah. a, an extremely important thing to be more exposed to. Yeah. And I went home that day and I chatted with my co-founder and I was like, Will, cool. Like, yeah, this is going to happen, right? Like shooting around February, like we should do this, right? Cool. And I think we are both going to learn a lot being here, right? Yeah. I, I, I think this city is full of crazy, crazy idea people, Yeah, which is what you want to be around. Like n you can spit all this stuff out and people yes. are like, I know this person that can help you with that. And that is what's great about this industry is we do really want to network as yeah. much as possible and introduce each other to other people. And we don't look at 
your ideas are as crazy. Right. That's why I left Orange County because I just felt like I wanted people around me who understood mm-hmm. the bigger picture of what I was trying to do. Wow. And that's the only thing that was, you know, holding me back is like, I want to be around people that are inspired as much as I'm inspired by the world, you know? And I saw during this time, this digital space as like an outlet to be me because I've been so confined in being in this box with other brands that just didn't Mm -hmm. see outside of the box. And, and that's fine. If you're, if you are staying to what you know, there's Mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. But I'm just not like that. I yeah. I have the need to go the opposite way of anyone who's going yep. that way. I just <laughs> instinct. Contrarian impulse. Yeah, it's right. like the black sheep in me. I'm like, oh, I yeah, can't I follow those white sheep. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't. That resonates with me so much. <laughs> yeah. I feel like one of the biggest moments of my life was when you wake up and you're like, wow, no one really knows what's right. Yeah. And so just because everyone else thinks this is how it works doesn't mean that's true. Exactly. Yeah. Like some other human yes. wrote, this is the right path. Why can't I be that other human that says exactly. this path might also be right too? Exactly. And you know what? That yeah. other person is just also a human. Yep. Yep. So you oh, are a human. We're a human. Why I can't it. I try this different thing? Yes. Wow. Yeah. So when did you first move from Orange County, if you I'm asking? Um, I moved after I got out of um, the hospital and out of like my bed, oh, which man. I got in a car accident in 2014. Wow. So I made the move close to like mid 2014. I was just like, I need to get out of here. I need to change my life. And I've been here ever since. And living here, I'm telling you right now, yeah. everything goes back by really, really quick. So it's almost seven years for me. And that went by so quick. Wow. Just like it felt felt like two years. But yeah. when I look back, I'm, I'm like, wow, I did so much stuff while I was here. But it's going to go by fast. I promise you. Oh, I believe that. Yeah. So That's tell sad. tell us a little bit about what is Carrot. I want Absolutely. everyone to know like your elevator speech yeah. about, you know, your own of business. Course. So I got to know a lot of creators when I was working at Instagram. And they start to tell me things that, hey, they wanted to figure out how to incorporate as a company mm-hmm. or doing taxes was really annoying. Or as I mentioned, we literally people walk into a bank with millions of followers and say, I want a business credit card and get asked questions like, do you launder money? Like <laughs> what yes. you do? Is this a euphemism for something else? Yeah. Let alone eventually trying to get a mortgage, right? It's just this classic case of a new type of creator of a business not fitting into the heuristics that the current financial system uses to trust people. Mm -hmm. And to me, I saw on the one hand, creators are businesses. On the other hand, I had the financial and fintech know-how to be like, if we were to build something different, this is how we could go and do it. So our vision is, as a creator, as you're setting up your business, you come to us, we help you incorporate, we help you track how much you're making and spending, automate your taxes, hold your money, wow. give you the best cards, give you capital to grow and run your business and scale it as you need to, which all businesses need at some point, Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. I just remember reading actually in, I think it's called a Bird Dog mm-hmm. or Shoe Dog by the founder of Nike, how at a pivotal moment in his company's growth, his company's bank actually shut him down because they didn't realize the type of business he was wow. and his spending patterns confused him so much. Yeah, they were like, this is not normal. Yeah, they were like, this isn't normal. Like, why are you having so much flow back and forth? Mm-hmm. And we hear that from creators too, right? Yeah. Oh, you know, I get paid from, you know, sometimes it's PayPal or Venmo or Cash App or whatever. And I have invoices coming in and moving out and they don't know what I do and I'm not employed by someone, right? Yeah. We want to address all of that. Yeah. And so for us, we're starting with the simplest thing possible, right? Which I showed to you. It's a black card where we give them the highest rewards. It's not just a black card. That (laughs) thing was fancy and heavy. (laughs) Thank you. Well, we think it's important for creators to be able to express themselves. And that means a card where the look and feel is something they deserve, where they can design it. Mm -hmm. And we give them rewards based off their social stats, right? And the whole model and idea is we really want this as our first flagship product to show to creators, you deserve something for you, built for you. Yeah. And we promise on our side, we're going to build more together that's going to be 
integrated with this card once you've started this relationship with us. Well, I love that because going back to high school, yeah. being a creative, you were looked down upon. You were never looked as like the mathematician or right. great at economics. I, I mean, I struggled through all that and I had to really try hard to get my, stay my A's, yeah. but painting and art class, yeah. I could close my eyes, you know? And yeah. it's so nice to see someone like you really like put out a hand for people that actually are doing such an amazing job at their craft. It is not easy to be a creative. Yes. And I hate that people think our jobs are simple. It isn't. To think of new ideas, to make people intrigued by your content, and to, I mean, these TikToks and Reels and being on all these platforms and keeping your audience engaged for this long of a time, we should not be questioned by financial you know, corporations exactly. that you're questioning our efforts yes. and being monetized, you know? Absolutely. So I commend you for creating something that means something to us that like we are valuable. We are, we are the new age of value yes. in, in any type of space when it comes to marketing. I'm frankly just grateful that we found a way we can help because as you said, society has always undervalued mm -hmm. especially western society in the states art and yes. creation right yep. exactly as you said right oh mm -hmm. you can go be a banker or a software engineer or something that people think is more tangible or concrete when in fact it's actually so hard to create something mm -hmm. you can't just sit down and do it yeah right it's that you can just grind it out mm -hmm. and then to create something that you've brought something of yourself into the world and others may or may not feel similarly about you it makes it so hard to make a living yeah and that's, again, going back to our earlier point, we're lucky now that things are changing. We had these digital platforms. People have become aware of how to share what they're doing, find other people through the internet who believe in it, and find ways to monetize off of it. But, like, that's just the beginning, right? There's still this whole other set of things that just make their life harder to be a business that we also want to help with, yeah. to your point. So I want to also know, is this card just for creators, or is this for... You know, say the say if someone sees carrot and they are working, you know, maybe at Starbucks or maybe at, you know, at the bank, <laughs> you right. know, and they don't want to use like maybe Chase Bank. But is it for everyone or is it just for certain people? I think that's yeah. important to know. It really comes down to what is a creator, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because that is who we're building for. Mm -hmm. Now. By one definition, it's the creators who we're starting with, right? Those who are more established and further along in their business where, hey, they've been at this and built up their revenues to a point where they, even if something, even if people don't understand what they're doing, they almost don't even care because yeah. it's like I'm at a point where I know what I'm doing and I'm going to continue moving forward, right? And at the other end of the spectrum is somebody who's like just getting started, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe they're in school or maybe, as you said, they're working some other job that isn't their passion. Yeah. And they're realizing, hey, I have all these energies to tap into and I can do something with this, right? If you look at this, we're starting from that first part of the spectrum, but our vision is absolutely to yeah. continue growing as we improve our underwriting, our community, and our product suite mm -hmm. to help those starting out as well. Amazing. Right? Amazing. Yeah. Um, so how how does creators benefit the most from your card? Like, yeah. let's say, okay, I'm getting my card, by the way. I'm excited. <laughs> but for instance, for me, personalizing my card, since I'm an entrepreneur, I'm very creative. I have like a lot. I like to travel. I like to shop <laughs> right. for beauty <laughs> stuff, you know, clothing to be presentable for certain things like this. So what makes my con my card very curated for me and how, how do you guys do that? Yeah. So <laughs> it's exactly as you said, right? The carrot card experience as a creator, you have so much stuff to think about on building and community and creating content. We don't Want, we want the card experience to be as simple as possible where you don't have to argue for the right limits. 
and yeah. you get rewards in the categories you want. And so the outcome is exactly as you said. Hey, right, these are the areas that are relevant to you as a creator and as a business. We give you rewards in those categories instead of the standard set that you may or may not care about, right? Yeah. And we give you really good rewards because we understand you your value better than a normal business, right? Mm -hmm. And we give you limits that your business can actually use to operate off of. We work with some creators who actually, even in creating their content, need to buy a lot of materials and equipment and gear. And mm -hmm. a lot of times they can't even do that with a card. We worked with yeah. one creator whose limit was so low, he had an employee whose job was just keep cycling through the card. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And then he came to us and like, yeah, we can do higher. And he's like, well, this is amazing. Yeah. Right? Now, obviously that's the outcome, right? Better limits, better rewards, customizing the rewards in the card, mm -hmm. right? You ask us, how do we do it, right? And that's what we're really excited about is we're building the world's first underwriting model, tying together creators' business financial information and stats with their social. Wow. And so we think we can see over time whether we're working with TikTokers, Twitch streamers, podcasters, musicians, athletes with strong Instagrams, mm -hmm. how the two begin to link together, right? Mm -hmm. Based off of your social stats, the type of content you produce, the engagement, how they monetize, and that how it helps predict their future revenues so we can give them the products that they actually need and wow. really value. Wow, that is that is some vital information, yeah. everyone, because you know, no matter how successful you are or how how much you're in this business, really, really deep diving, the financial burden is always happening. I mean, I my dad told me to get a credit card when I was really young to build up my credit score. So when they look me up, I have like 25 credit cards, different ones. And I've always just been like, you know what, this one actually doesn't give me the rewards I want. This one doesn't. And I've been happy with the one I have right now. But you bringing this to life of like exactly what speaks to me and speaks to my okay. heart when it comes to shopping and it comes to my lifestyle. I mean, that's so important because we have been for this whole time been trained that we can only pick from this menu or this menu and you just have to pick one, right? Yes. So that is really frustrating, especially as creators, because we have never really we've never really seen value in credit cards that speak to our lifestyle. Yeah. It's always, exactly right. yeah, it's always been traditional lifestyles yeah. that haven't amplified into the new age. So yeah. it's really, really cool to see yeah. that you're doing that. And I know that, you know, you have been a business also that is in, in backing of fundraising, right? Like this has been, a a business that we haven't even had on or we haven't talked on the show yet about. And I think it's really, really important for people yeah. to know because right now a lot of different types of people have this great idea, but they don't have the money to back their idea. And so I really want us to talk about like what you think is a good strategy for anyone out there who's trying to raise money for their idea and really get it off the ground yeah. and like how you did that. Absolutely. And I think the very first thing to always think about is, hey, do I want to be a bootstrapped business or do I want to be a venture backed business? Mm. Because both are equally valid and viable, mm -hmm. but actually are different in how and why they need to fundraise. Right. Where I think this also explains a lot of the disconnect where you sometimes see People looking at a startup and saying, these guys, this company, this group, they're not even targeting a big market or their product will clearly fail or they're not even generating revenue. Mm -hmm. Why is their valuation so high? And it's basically because there's two very different ways of thinking about it, right? So essentially a venture-backed business is one that is probably going to fail. <laughs> oh. And it's not going to fail because of the lack of hard work or effort put in by the entrepreneur. And by the way, we are a venture-backed business, mm -hmm. so I'm including ourselves in this category, <laughs> right? Yeah. We say it's likely to fail because there is something that is still developing needed for the business to wildly succeed. Mm -hmm. And that could be the market. Mm -hmm. It could be a certain technology. It could be how people perceive or receive what they're doing, right? And 
despite that very high risk of failure, there's also a small chance of building something really big, right? And so from a venture capitalist perspective, the way they think about funding businesses is, hey, say I fund a portfolio, almost all of them will fail, but one of them will become the next Google. Yes, it's the risk. Yes. <laughs> it's the risk for high reward. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. And so when you're going a venture capital route, we're fortunate to have great investors. And we're on the same page where we gave up equity in our company to bring them in, mm -hmm. to bring in their capital, because we're going for something really big, right? And we want and we're happy to partner with them to do so because we need the resources. Yep. And we're all aligned that's very high risk. Mm -hmm. Whereas there are other types of businesses where the risk is different, right? Perhaps the risk is more just on execution, right? You know there's a problem. You know there's a market. You know yeah. the technologies there. You know the opportunities. This It's more just, hey, can I execute to perfection and conquer this, mm -hmm. right? And you might not need capital as much, right? Or if you do, it may not be necessarily venture capitalists that you want to bring on to provide that capital because mm -hmm. in exchange for the risk, they do ask for parts of your company, right? Yeah. There are other might be other sources of funding for you to consider, right? Such as small business loans, right? Or friends and family. Yeah. Because again, you don't necessarily want to give us as much of your company if you're more confident that there's this opportunity and you can go execute it. And similarly, from a venture capitalist perspective, they are, in fact, almost weirdly looking for companies that a lot of people will be like, huh, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> because, as you know, when people yeah. think something doesn't make sense, there is an opportunity there somewhere. Yeah. And, and you know, we've, we've talked and discussed with, you know, different types of investments yeah. and friends and family and all that stuff. And everyone has a different role to play, right? You can do a business loan, but you're, you're having to do an interest rate or even a friend's, what we were talking about earlier actually today is you can, you know, lo get loaned from your friends and family yeah. if, if you just need it at that time to, and you know, it's going to be reimbursed yes. quickly. That's always a good route too, because you don't need to go into the bank and get this huge, scary loan. 100%. If if your if your family can support you for a small amount of money, Vamped has never been. Um, we've never been fundraised yeah. because we provide a service. Yeah. So we and you've executed so well. Thank you. That you haven't had oh, to. seven yeah. years, man. <laughs> no, it's been nice. I, we've you know we've been asked to be um, what is it called when acquired, and you know we've also been asked to be funded, but I think you know. I've also been told, like, if you can and you don't need to, why do it? Why right? give up part of your company? Exactly. Yes. So there is different options out there that you can take. I would say do your research. Yes. And also you have to remember that anyone that is a part of your business that is giving you money is also going to be the voice in your ear. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very true, right? So remember that it should be a really sweet voice and someone who believes in your product yes. and believes that you have a great vision yeah. and can support you um, instead of micromanage you all day and make you feel like you're not worthy. It, exactly. Yeah. The best kind of investors and ones that are fortunate to have are ones who they just trust you to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And you're human. Yeah. You have to do those trials and errors. Yes. Uh, there's never going to be that smooth sailing seven years you know yeah. i can remember Ooh. every single traumatic situation Ooh. in my business <laughs> and i'm sure you have yep. the same like <laughs> oh, you like yeah. can pinpoint we all, we all remember the emotions don't go away <laughs> yeah. even if you don't remember the detail you remember the, the, how you felt yes yep. but let me reassure you out there that the good thing about that feeling yeah. is you know when not to touch fire again yep and that's the great thing about being an entrepreneur. You have all these different types of really cool uh, ways of figuring out things that you get better and better. You get calloused. Yeah. You like already know when you see <laughs> something that it's going to be wrong or right. Oh, right. So true. Right. I love that about it. Yeah. You don't have that. You don't have that like cat reflex of landing on your feet as much when you are working for someone else. Yeah. Because they already they already are figuring out the strategy of if something if shit hits the fan, you don't really have to do it as much. Yeah. But when you own your own business, 
every fire is only going to be put out yep. if you do it. So so true. Yeah. That reminds me. I once saw this old photograph of Harry Truman. He had, had a plaque on his desk. It said, the buck stops here. <laughs> and because at the end of the day, yes. you're going to have to be the one who makes yes, decisions. Yes, exactly. And as you said, these are the only sorts of things you learn by going through them. Yes, <laughs> but they're fun. I want yes. I want everyone to know that it's fun. Oh, yeah. How exciting is it to like know oh, that you're, you're making a card uh, for an, this generation? Yes. On an existential level, despite all the work stress, on an existential level, I've never been happier. Oh, because cool. Because I'm doing yeah. what I want to do with you, the people I want to do with. And yeah. hey, I get to come here today and Aww. chat with you and discuss all these things because of the things that I'm working on, right? Yeah. Like yeah. there's so much good that comes when you try and take a risk mm -hmm. and there's a lot of stress because the stress and uncertainty and challenge is what makes it worthwhile in the first place. For sure. And if you're going to have stress, you might as well have stress doing something you love, right? <laughs> Versus something you don't want that someone else is just telling you to do. Exactly. Yeah. And that enters into our lightning oh round. Oh, I'm excited. Are you ready? Oh, I'm I, ready. I'm starting to just love this part because yeah. everyone's answers are always so, so unique. You ask me a question, I just answer right away. You instantly. insert like, your answer. That's okay. all you have to do. Let's do it. Unfiltered. <laughs> yeah. How many kids would you like to have? One to two. One to two. I secretly want four. <laughs> it's a you lot. I yeah. can do it though. They're yeah. all going to be accountants. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have great. this figured out. Um, are rats cute? Mice are, but rats aren't. Okay. So you like that genre of family animals. Yeah, <laughs> I almost feel like it's the connotation. Like I just think of cuteness when I think of mice. Really? Oh, okay. okay. Ratatouille though, like there's some cute okay, rats in there. Okay, so there we go. There are exceptions. There are exceptions. Are you politically correct? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> That's a random one, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's your favorite car? Probably the one I grew up in with my family, which is the Odyssey family van. Oh, just a really? lot of that's memories. your favorite car? Or just memories, nostalgic. Yeah, it's so and, much. My family yeah. we drove around. We spent so much time in that. Me and my brother and my parents. And that's a wistful feeling that you know oh, we'll never quite recreate it. So yeah. it holds a fond oh, place. Wow. I don't know if it's the sleekest car ever. But no, but a lot it, of good it, memories. Yeah, I was gonna say the memories part oh, is yeah. the best part. Totally. Oh. Um, do you? know how to salsa dance i took classes i'm really bad oh so you did take classes yeah it's more two left feet okay same i <laughs> took a class and i was like i can't do this this yeah. is just like like I, there's I just too do, much going I, on my brain is it. confused yes mine <laughs> yeah. too okay what does the acronym scuba stand for self-contained underwater breathing apparatus okay i'm a nerd yeah nerd <laughs> alert just yeah. kidding no that's <laughs> freaking cool though i wish yeah. i could do that that's awesome. Yeah. That's not nerdy. That's really well, cool you. that you said that I'm fast. <laughs> Scale of one to ten, how good are you at wiffle ball? Oh, probably like a two or three. Really? I appreciate my parents like put me through baseball. Yeah. But like I had never grown up playing catch or doing anything involving hand-eye coordination. So I was just the dude in right field looking <laughs> half the time at the sky, <laughs> half the time at my shoes, and then 1% of the time, oh, wow, there's a ball coming. I should try and get that. So probably not that good at wiffle ball, but oh. yeah, there's something there. It's not a one, not okay. a one. Okay, well, at least you're not at a one. Yeah. I, was, I was the complete opposite. My dad was like, oh, you're a girl. You're supposed to be a boy. Oh, wow. I want you to surf, skate, <laughs> so play basketball. all of the athletic activities. Oh, yeah. Activities. I was like tomboy for wow. sure. I still am. I have to like dress. Hey, those are good skills to apart, have. But yeah, I, I love yeah. any type of sport. That's, that's awesome. That's my thing. Um, do you l believe in love at first sight? Yes. That's good. You should. I feel like everyone should. Yeah. You should. Uh, we have energies. Totally. You know, you just know when you know. Yeah, I, think. I, I, I do believe in it. Okay, good. I refuse I'm, to believe that there isn't. You're, <laughs> you're an empathetic. The so world you, I wouldn't want to live in. Yes, thank but. you. How many cups of coffee do you drink per day? Believe it or not, zero. Really? Yeah, this actually gets a little to what we've talked about before. But yeah. Have you tried Bulletproof yet? I haven't. Oh, I've seen it. <laughs> come on. Well, when you move here, we are, we are going to town on it. I can't wait. Okay. What's your ideal outside temperature? A little chilly. I'd like to say like a crisp autumn. So Ooh. I actually, believe it or not, I was born in Canada next to a nuclear power plant. 
what yeah i don't know that's where my parents decided to have me and raise me as a kid yes and so i don't know if that's why but i always like temperatures colder than anybody else i'm around well canada's pretty so, crispy it is pretty crispy yeah right and so i like i like it like a little crisp well it's yeah. warm here it is warm here. it's gonna be you're gonna <laughs> see that there's no seasons that's true but i i like as long as it's not like hot and humid mm -hmm. which i feel the west coast we tend to be a little less humid yeah than like new york oh yeah, yeah. new york's like unbearable the subways like in the middle of summer yeah, that no. i don't like yeah, but other no. than that i i'm pretty good with it yeah well i really enjoyed getting to know you a little bit more yeah, thank you so much and this was such an interesting conversation i feel like a lot of people need to really understand their finances and the better ways of going out there and yeah. purchasing so eric where can we find you you and your business yeah absolutely so if you look us up, we're trycarrot.com. So that's T-R-Y as in give it a try. Ooh. And that's carrot as in not the bunny vegetable, <laughs> but K-A-R-A-T as in carrot, like a 24 carat piece of jewelry. I love it. Right? So we're at trycarrot.com or trycarrot on Instagram. Amazing. Well, now that makes sense that it's K-A-R-A-T. Yes. I mean, the the card feels expensive it's heavy it's sleek just like creators just very you expensive very sleek and you creative get it. i love it thank you so thank you for coming on please everyone subscribe follow uh listen to this episode on audio watch it on youtube and eric thank you so much for all yeah. your information it was truly great to see you again and yeah we'll see you on you. digital that sounds perfect. Thanks so much for hosting. Thank today. you. So